Alright guys, I'm going to be doing uh, too much body lift on this guy. Uh, it's a rough country uh, body lift. Um, this kit comes with uh, everything that you need to do a two inch body lift. All the pucks. It comes with uh, some uh, brackets for standoffs. All the longer bolts uh, for a longer shift lever and uh, four-wheel drive shift lever. Uh, I've actually already installed one of these for the uh, shifter, which I'll show you a little bit later, for the four-wheel drive shifter, not the uh, manual shifter. And then it's got a uh, exhaust drop, uh, two inch. It's got this piece for uh, your vacuum line to extend it, and that's why you have uh, a little bit longer vacuum line here. And you can do that or you can replace the whole, whole hose. I'm just going to go ahead and use the extension on it. Uh, it comes with great uh, instructions, um, pretty much shows you everything you need as far as tools wise. Um, so that's good, it comes with great pictures, uh, but I'll go through all that when we're doing the install. A uh, couple of things you're going to need, assortment of uh, sockets, a good uh, hammer, this is actually a uh, dead blow hammer. Um, a um, longer... Uh, breaker bar, uh, impact drill, uh, it says you're going to need 11 36 inch drill bit and what that's going to do is uh, allow for uh, a bigger bolt to go through on uh, your exhaust mount. So uh, stay tuned and we'll get going on this. Uh, oh, but sorry about that. You're also going to need probably a jack. Um, the reason why I say this, uh, I like this guy is because you can actually lift this up to the frame and then um, just jack it up. Or you can use a floor jack. Uh, that'll work just fine as well. Um, so the first thing you guys want to do is remove the positive cable from the battery and then remove the negative cable from the battery. In order to do this, you can either use a half inch wrench or socket or a 13 millimeter wrench or socket. Okay, so here we're going to be installing the new hose for the brake booster. Um, it's a 3 inch extension uh, to allow for the 2 inch body lift or 3 inch body lift, depending on which one you guys are doing. So in order to remove the front Jeep plastic piece, you're going to need a 3 8 socket. There's two bolts on the passenger side and two bolts on the driver's side. So next you're going to want to remove the air cleaner box and air cleaner hose that goes to the carburetor. Alright guys, so we're going to be removing the shift linkage for an automatic. If you have a manual transmission, this will not apply to your vehicle. But since I have an automatic, uh, we're going to need to remove um, some pins on the shift linkage to remove that rod. Um, so we need a 3 8 socket for this. For those of you that haven't done the 1 inch engine lift uh, motor mount kit, um, you're going to need to remove your radiator and radiator fan shroud bolts so that when you lift the body um, they won't uh, be in uh, the way. Uh, in my case, since I've done a one inch motor mount lift, I won't be uh, showing you how to do this. Uh, and I've also trimmed back my uh, radiator fan shroud. So the motor mounts are made by Brown Dog and I actually have another video on how to install those if you'd like to check that out. Now you're going to want to remove the gas tank filler valve. In order to do that, you're going to need a 5 16 socket wrench. There are six bolts holding this on. First, you're going to need to remove the gas cap to access the six bolts. Once you get the six bolts off, just go ahead and push it back behind the plastic and you're done. I 
I've made another video on showing you how to install this 3 inch extension piece when I made the shift knob. Uh, it's fairly easy, you just unscrew the bolt on the bottom and then add it in and then put your, new sh your shift knob back on. If you have a manual transmission, you're going to want to add this to your manual transmission as well. So there's a total of 11 bolts on the Jeep. One in front, three across each side, one in each rear wheel well, and one behind the bumper on each side. So you're going to want to remove all of the bolts except for the three across the passenger side. So here you're going to be installing the uh, two inch uh, radiator mounts. Uh, you're going to slide them underneath the rubber uh, grommet and then um, with the self tapping screws that are provided in the kit you're going to mount them uh, onto the frame. Uh, make sure you do a measurement from the bumper to the uh, mount to make sure they're identical on both sides. So you're going to need to uh, drop your transmission uh, linkage mount. And in order to do that, uh, you're going to use this provided a bracket that they uh, give in the package. Uh, you're going to mount the two uh, top holes to the original holes on the frame. And then the uh, bottom of the bracket that has three holes is your new mount for your transmission linkage. Alright guys, so we're going to have to make an adjustment to this uh, shifter linkage. Um, I'm going to need to add 2 inches into it, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it. I'm going to get a rod that's the same diameter as this on the inside and uh, overlap it by about 1 inch on either side of this cut with the 2 inch in between. So let's get cutting this and uh, show you what the right, So now that it's cut, we're going to go ahead and clean up these edges. I'll bevel the, the edges. 
so uh, sliding in that other piece uh, really easy. Uh, oh yeah, I also forgot to mention, before you do any sorts of, sort of cut, so you can remember your angles, I drew a line. Right, so when I separate it out, I'm going to draw a line on the uh, piece that's going to overlap and it'll line up on both sides. So this thing can be twisted. Uh, so I'm going to cut a 4 inch piece. So what I do is I made a 1 inch mark from here to there and from there to there. So when I separate it out, I can make sure that I have uh, 2 inches in here. So 2 inches in here, 1 inch there, 1 inch there, it's a 4 inch piece. So one inch is not too far in, so I know I have exactly a two inch extension. Now, if you're going to do this for a three inch body lift, you're going to have three inches in here, and then I would recommend at least doing the one inch overlap. Uh, but what I, did, with what I did was a two inch body lift, so I only need a four inch piece. And so you can see that I got a four inch piece here. I draw a line down the center, line up that line to that line. And you see my one inch mark both sides, and that's how I know there's two inches in there. I'll open it up and I'll just show you what there's two inches once it's overlapped. Alright guys, there it is all welded up. I went ahead and smoothed out the, the edge there so it doesn't get caught in anything in the engine bay uh, because it's a bigger pipe than this. Um, I just wanted to bubble it out. So, there's the finished product. Uh, we'll get it back guys, installed today. Got a two inch body lift on. Got this front piece back on. It looks kind of odd now that it goes over everything, but I'd rather see that than what's underneath until I get my winch on. So it's covered everything. It looks looks decent. Got uh, the radiator supports. Got all these tightened up. All eleven of them. Want to make sure they're snug. Uh, I'm not really sure what this this torque rating is on them, but I just torqued them down to where. I felt like they were uh, tight enough. Um, so, one thing that's a little odd, and that's with any uh, body lift, you're gonna get a little uh, gap in there. Uh, but you can always build your bumper a little bit taller or uh, put something in there to, to cover it. So, the reason why I put this uh, two inch body lift on is so I can actually do a two inch uh, gas uh, tank lift and just bring it up. So it's not uh, so low on the ground, I can bring it up another two inches, get a little more clearance, and then I can also uh, move this to the side, uh, which I got the brackets for that and everything. So, all right guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.